everybody. So um, here's my talkie video, kind of part shenanigans story time. We'll just label this uh, karaoke etiquette and beyond. Uh, there's something that I feel very knowledgeable about. <laughs> um, one of my retarded hobbies is karaoke. If you have seen my Smule video, which I have somewhere in my channel, it's me with some random dude, which I did get information. We were singing uh, Dance Magic Dance from the Labyrinth. Um, so yeah, so I, I karaoke a lot. I don't have the greatest voice, but that's the great thing about karaoke. Who cares? Nobody cares. Um, but I do have some tips, and I made a little list here, plus my story time, because um, going out to bars can be an adventure. And I don't mean in terms of you trying to pick up people, because I'm not trying to pick anybody up. Sometimes they try and pick me up. It's it's very few and in between that that'll happen. Um, but, I mean, there are other adventures that are to be had. But I do want to talk about if you have never gone karaoke, I suggest you go with a group of friends. Um, I used to go, if I couldn't go with anybody, I would go by myself because I'm such a nerd for it. I mean, I don't... I mean, I got my phone on Facebook. I have thousands of people at my you know, reach to talk with if I get bored at the bar, but I don't do that anymore because weird things happen when you're alone. Um, so yes, no, we'll call this karaoke charm school and adventures. That's what we'll call this. Yes. Okay. So karaoke etiquette. Um, I will say this as a preface, karaoke is, is a great thing because you can come together, you can entertain yourself, you can be entertained because, you know, there's people that go to karaoke bars and they do know how to sing. They can sing very, very well. So with just like a dollar fifty drink of some kind, um, where I live, that is very common. Dollar fifty, two dollar beer. It's cheap. Fifteen dollars a night. I'm good, okay. Um, so the thing with that, you know, you can be entertained. You can. It just doesn't matter. Everyone's super cool. I enjoy going to old people biker bars because nobody cares. No one's judgmental. Everyone is just trying to have a good time. So, number one on my list for karaoke etiquette, don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. That goes with don't heckle people. If someone's up there singing and you just start booing them, like, first of all, this isn't a fucking concert. You didn't pay to be let down by someone. You're looking forward to having them entertain you. That's not what karaoke is about. Karaoke is just about having a good time, pretending you're a rock star for about three to four minutes. Um, unless it's like free bird or something and you're a rock star for like fucking 10 minutes. But um, you just go up there, have a good time. No one should expect that you have a great voice. No one should expect that you have a terrible voice. It's just kind of like, what are you going to give us? Um, so yeah, don't be a dick because no one's going to put up with it. Don't be a, a dick. Yeah, it's like don't heckle people. Don't boo them. Don't laugh at them. Don't scream at them if they're not doing good or they're doing really good. Um, I mean, it's a great fast track to get kicked out of the bar and have your night, you know, temporarily just kind of shut down for the moment until you find the next place. Just like, you know, and, and again, too, I mean, if you're the only person in your crowd heckling someone, all your friends are going to be so embarrassed for you. They're going to not want, they're going to play the I don't know this guy card. So don't do it. Um, another thing that I see mostly with super drunk people that their friends do not have them on check is when they go up there and they try to duet with you. I've never had this happen. I've seen it and I've heard stories of people getting into bar fights because some drunk idiot wants to come up and duet with you and you're not having it because that's not their time on the stage. It's your time on the stage. And they want to come up and sing with you. And they're probably at that point really inebriated where they're a lot, a lot worse than how you're sounding. So it messes up your night. Don't do that. And if you have friends that do that, you need to watch how many drinks they're having a day. Or just don't go out with that friend because they will embarrass you. And they might get you kicked out of the bar too. So don't, don't do that. Um, another thing that kind of coincides with that, don't go up there and then dance near the person to or steal their spotlight you will get your chance to dance and be the Shakira or Selena or Pat Benatar 
of your dreams. It will come soon. It will come to you. But don't go up there and start dancing. Even if you're like a really good dancer, like that's just rude, you know. Don't take someone's spotlight when it's not your turn yet. Attention, whore, you will get your turn. Everyone gets their turn. Oh my gosh, pet peeves. People who eat the mic, right? And you, and you know what I'm fucking talking. You know what I'm talking about when I say eat the mic, right? Instead of singing here, you know, some people cup it and they go like that. So just be like, hey, I'm gonna sing a great song. I hope everybody can join in with it. You know what I mean? Like, freaking retarded. Now I've contaminated this water bottle. Um. It might be on par with fellatio. I don't know. Um, some people really, and you'll get the mic and you're like, God, this is like, this is moist. Like, did you, like, you made out with it. It's fucking gross, dude. Oh my God. People who don't know this song, but they choose it anyway. And I've seen this done with sober, buzzed, drunk, super drunk people. I don't know why. I mean, super drunk people, I understand it because I... I've done this, but I'm already drunk. So you, your friend needs to check and be like, hey, do you know this song really good? Um, that's really annoying. And I've done this like twice because you love the song so much, you get excited. And when you get up there, you're like, what? How does, how does this song go? Um, yeah, embarrassing. It sucks. Your time was wasted because you couldn't enjoy the song because you're like trying to figure out the rhythm of how these lyrics are going on the screen. And last but not least, my favorite, <laughs> my favorite pet peeve, the no means yes, people. Let me, let me tell you what that means. No means yes. Um, I had a girl one time I go, well, I was at the bar. She goes up there. She had a little purse on and everything. And she's like, <laughs> I don't know if she was drunk, you know. You get giggly. It's understandable. I'm not shading her for that. So, <laughs> no. No. And then everyone's looking at her like, Shh. Oh my God, John, I'm not going to do this, John. You're so mean. Oh my God, John. And then the music starts. <laughs> oh my God. No, I don't want to. I haven't. Alex. Like, like. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or she, no, it, it was like a serious Celine, De De Celine Dion song. Um, I don't even remember. But she was, she, she went from like, <laughs> you know, it's the power of love. Like, she got, but she got like zero to 60. 60 being serious, zero being completely giggly schoolgirl. She was like serious, okay? And that just looks dumb because it's just like, no, I don't want to. No, it's retarded. Don't do that. You're really annoying because the next time you go up, everybody's going to go. Yeah. Anyways, so fun, the fun stuff. Okay. So like, let me tell you some of the shenanigans and adventures that, uh, that you maybe can have too. I'll share some of mine. One time I went alone. And this was during a phase where I just, I only had one kid at the time, um, and my husband was out at work, and I was just like so bored. I was like, hey, mom, I'm just going to go have a drink and hang out by myself, <laughs> because I'm weird like that. I can do that. Um, so she's like, okay. So I would go out, you know, once a week or for like a month. I might have done it every weekend for a month. Um, and I went, and... Um, this is a crazy story because I was sitting there. I think this was the same night I got hit on by a really old lesbian. Not like shading the LGBTQ community because of that. But just like, not because she's a lesbian. Just because it's like really weird when older, much older people hit on you. And then, you know, I'm, it's, it's just funny. It's funny. So I think that was the same night that happened. But anyways, the, the token here is that we, there was a group of people and there was a guy in a wheelchair. You know, guy in a wheelchair, whatever, who cares? And I remember this guy must have gone up like two, three times because he sang nothing but Aerosmith songs. So that's that's what I remember from this this adventure. He sang nothing but Aerosmith songs. So, but he was he looked like a messed out crackhead type dude. I'm sorry, just that's what he looked like. He was in his wheelchair. He had like a trucker hat on, and every time he got up to the stage before he belted out his best Steven Tyler. 
he was like, I'm in the porn industry. Yeah. And like, you know, everyone at the bar is like, Of course, I looked up, like, what? <sighs> this little skinny dude on a wheelchair, he was like, I'm in the porn industry. Every time he got up. I don't know. I don't know what he did in the porn industry. I mean, I'm sure what he did, but I don't know what he did. I didn't bother to look it up. Um, never seen him before, so probably like some low-budget home video stuff. <laughs> but um, anyway, that was a trip. Because that's like totally unexpected, right? Um, another adventure that I had one time is I was with my two girlfriends and we were out at the karaoke bar just by ourselves. No one bothered us like the whole night, which is great, you know, because we each had a boyfriend or I, where I was married. You know, I'm married, but they each had a boyfriend at the time. Um, so this really, really drunk dude that I can only describe as the spitting image of the white guy from the offspring video, Pretty Fly for a White Guy. I'm just going to say his twin from that era, dressed in those clothes, came over to our booth and sat down next to my friend. Uh, I think it was, was it me or my friend Dolores? I don't remember. It, it was on our side. Because I remember this other girl, Irene, was sitting across from us. So she was just like. <laughs> well, anyways, pretty fly for a white guy over here. Had like, you know, the fattest beer goggles on, which I did tell him he needed to take those beer goggles off because we, he was at the wrong table. He was just like, hey. You girls want to make out? And I was like, no, I'm, I'm good. Um, thank you, though. You want to take off those beer goggles. They're a little too thick right now. But I'm going to shot, shoot you down. And I'm going to say, no, thank you, but thank you. And you can leave now. So he sat there for a moment. You know, that's, that's always fun, right? Um, another thing that happened to me once that I, I thought that was so hilarious was that, it was a long time ago, I was with my, my male friend, it was just me and him, just shooting the shit or whatever, having a couple drinks, I went up there to sing, and I don't know what's up with these, this, this group of guys, they came and sat down at our table, and you know, I don't know if this was a joke on me, like, because I consider myself really fat and unattractive, so I don't know if this was like, because the guy kind of looked like, mm, maybe a Ben Affleck like a, a like a, a cuter version of Ben Affleck's cousin, but better looking than Casey Affleck. So I was kind of like, mm, you you must be at the wrong table, sir. But my friend was sitting next to me. You know, I mean, obviously he's my friend. We're not like hugging or just holding hands or anything. But I don't know how long they had been looking at me or at our table. So there was no way to know if the the man I was sitting with was my husband or my boyfriend or, you know, like whatever. They just came and took it upon themselves to sit at my table and then they're like hey i want to sing aladdin this will you be my jasmine and i was like why is it because i'm brown <laughs> like because i'm brown you know um i was like <laughs> no so like i went up there i didn't sing that song with them because i was like uh, no you know i was kind of like looking at my guy friend like hey can you pretend to be like hey something something you know um so anyways, <laughs> so anyways, I go up there and I sing my turn and then Ben Affleck comes up on my side and he's like, he's like booty thumping me with his butt or whatever, like, you know, like they're hitting you with their butt. But he was like so bony, it was like hurting my ass because he was like doing it on my side of my hip. So like I just started like whacking him in the butt, you know, and then like I can hit pretty hard with my hip. I don't know, like I have hips of steel or something. So I kind of like hipped them out of the way and it threw them off a little bit. Um, I think he left me alone after that because I put all my weight, my 175 pounds of hip into him. I don't think he liked that. But, you know, some people are ballsy and um, expect that. It's crazy. But back to uh, just fun stuff. I mean, there was another time I was at the bar and this old man who looked like Jack Nicholson, he had like the fedora hat, he had sunglasses totally gone you know he was gone he must have been between 65 and 70 really old guy right and we went up there and we were like okay all right let's see what this guy's gonna do and then purple rain started and we were like oh this is gonna be good 
Because it could be really bad good or it could be really good good. But the thing with that is with karaoke, you never know, right? You can't just judge a book by a cover. This old drunk dude in the sunglasses and fedora hat in this dark bar killed it on Prince. He got like every single inflection right on point. It was so hilarious. Like I'll never forget it to this day because that man for that five minutes was Prince. It was so funny. Like he killed it. And everybody in the bar was like, ah, because it was great, right? Yeah, that's all I want to talk about. Story time, karaoke shenanigans, and etiquette. So don't be a dick. Don't heckle people. Don't go up there when it's not your turn. Don't hog the mic. Don't steal someone's spotlight. Again, it's free entertainment. No one's paying you to be there. You know, you're not paying to be there. So just be fair with everyone and take turns. And it's a lot of fun, and it helps overcome a lot of shyness and, and things that I've experienced with myself and my friends that I've taken with me have opened up more over the years every time we go karaoke. So it's a good self-esteem builder whether you can sing or not. It just kind of takes you to the next level of not being so shy, right? That's the great thing about karaoke. That's why I love it so much. But that's my take on it.